Welcome back. After choosing a template, you're finally ready to get your hands dirty and design your campaign. In this lesson, I'll walk you through the main functionalities of the Optimog Editor, but I also encourage you to explore it on your own because there's so much you can do here. On the left side, the first option you see is theme. Our newest templates are all themes compatible, which means that if you define your brand settings here once, the next time you create a campaign from this theme, Optimonk will remember them. Pretty cool, right? Display is where the most essential appearance settings live. Under position, you can choose where on the page you'd like your pop-up to appear. For example, you can set whether your sticky bar appears on the top or the bottom of the page, or set your side message to show up on one side if you already have another important element, like a chat widget, on the other. You can also choose the type of transitions to use, like zoom or fade, and modify the color of the website overlay. Now let's move on to the heart and soul of campaigns, elements. The Optimonk editor is a drag and drop editor, meaning you can simply drag new elements into the campaign and drop them exactly where you want them to be placed just like I did with this input field here. Once you have the element selected, you can see all the options for this element on the right. Here, you can style the element, for example. Let's choose a background and a hover color and give its corner some radius. Under Add Element, you will find all available elements sorted into groups. You can add input fields to collect phone numbers and first names, create a survey with feedback elements, or add the countdown or discount code element. Here, let's add a new input element to the campaign to collect our visitors' first names along with their email addresses. By default, we assume it's the first name that you want to ask for, but if you'd like to change the input type or the placeholder text, you can do it on the right. You may have noticed that if you have any text on your campaign selected, you have all these options to style the text. Select the font you want to use, font weight, font size, color, etc. You can even add your own phone family by clicking on the plus icon. The last option we have left on the nav bar is the dev mode. This is where you can insert custom CSS and JavaScript. So now that you have all these elements on your campaign, you need a clear overview of the structure to do some further styling. Here's a quick tip. Anytime you click on the website overlay, you'll see all the different elements of your campaign listed on the right. If you select any element here, You'll see all its styling options. You can change its background, adjust its sides and corner roundings. If you're creating a campaign that has multiple pages, like a list building offer and the thank you page, you can select which page you want to edit here at the bottom of the editor. The last page you'll see here will always be called teaser. The teaser is a small version of a pop-up that can appear before or after your main pop-up is displayed. You can edit the campaign displayed here, modify the teaser settings, and enable or disable it entirely. Once we have all pages of our campaign ready, we are ready to review how it looks on different devices. Luckily, all our templates are responsive. If you are using any of our pre-made templates, they'll appear perfectly on both desktop and mobile devices. However, you can always make edits only to the mobile version of your campaign if you want. And finally, with Live Preview, you can check your brand new pop-up over your live site. You can even share this link with your colleagues full approval. Make sure to save your design once you're ready. Congrats on designing your very first campaign. Join me in the next lesson to learn all about your triggering options.